So this year, 2023, what might the weather forecast look like by the year 2053? Well, first, before we get there, let's take a look back at how drought conditions have changed over the last 20 years or so. Going back to 2000, droughts becoming more frequent and more intense around California. Now, thankfully, this year we've caught a break with some very heavy rain and heavy Sierra snow. We've managed to back out of those conditions that set up very intense just one year ago. At the same time, as we go back farther in time when it comes to California's average temperature since 1895, you can see a more distinct upward trend since 1980 and especially since 2000, where we've seen four of the five warmest years on record since about 2010. So what this does, that warmer air is a critical component to loading the atmosphere with a higher moisture carrying capacity. Now, depending on the temperatures, that could power up some heavier snow rates if the air above is still cold enough to support snowfall. But in many times, when it comes to our atmospheric river storms, that makes them more intense. The ability to gather up more moisture, they develop more rapidly and bring higher rain rates and a higher risk of flooding into the Bay Area. And in some ways, we did see some aspects of that from December into January as those storms that came in did bring some high snow levels, but the benefit obviously was the rainfall filling up our local reservoirs, but too much too soon also led to widespread flooding and ongoing landslides around the Bay Area. Now, as of late April, as of Earth Day, that Sierra snowpack is still supersized, which leads to the other side of the coin when it comes to flooding and runoff. It's the snowmelt season, which is really getting kickstarted by warming temperatures. So we look around California from the satellite view. You can see familiar bodies of water from Lake Tahoe, Mono Lake, Bay Area, San Luis Reservoir here. But now the Tulare Lake Basin also starting to fill up. A site not seen in many years will be that Tulare Lake Basin filling up with water likely into the beginning of summer, which leads us to where our weather forecast and climate is likely to be moving forward. A continuation of those intense droughts, progressively hotter summer temperatures at the same time winters having those high impact storms, but likely with higher snow levels through time. And that's an important factor as we look back at some of the weather whiplash we've experienced in just the last five years. And Sacramento makes a good example of this when you take into account in 2021 in October, that was the end of the longest dry spell for interior Northern California, 212 days. Now within a week of that, you had the wettest day on record, 5.44 inches of rain falling in Sacramento. It's that weather whiplash of intense summer heat and dry conditions coinciding with fewer but high impact rain events. So what might a mega flood or high impact rain event such as an arc storm scenario or multiple atmospheric river storms look like in a future with a warmer climate? So Dr. Daniel Swain took a look at this with the warmer climate future, the arc storm two project and shows that with less Sierra snowpack and those elevated rain rates, higher moisture values being transported across the Pacific and that warmer climate that leads to higher rain rates and a higher risk of flooding. So the weather whiplash just continues to get more extreme. Hotter temperatures becoming possible in summer, the likelihood of more intense droughts and more frequent droughts ongoing. But those incoming atmospheric river storms likely packing an even bigger punch with less snowfall and more rain across the Sierra. So very likely the weather we've seen over the last two decades only gets amplified even more moving forward into the future between dry to flooding conditions across California in the next two to three decades.